Welcome to Fedora, the vehicle for automotive Linux. We are Allison King and Steven Smugent. I'm Allison King. I'm a technical project manager within the automotive program, which means I work with engineering teams, both within Red Hat and partner engagement teams to identify customer requirements, build upon them, and then ultimately shape the future of the in-vehicle operating system, all within the agile framework. And to put it in other terms, I'm a cat herder. Uh, my name is Stephen Smugin. I'm a longtime Red Hat Fedora uh, employee who's done many different things in different roles. Most of them get titles after I've completed them. So today we're going to take you through how we are building a lean and agile team to plan and execute on requirements for the Red Hat in-vehicle operating system. With Red Hat's already established presence in the upstream and Linux community, upstream Linux and cloud communities, we want to take the time today to explain a little bit more about how we'll be establishing a presence in the automotive community through the automotive CentOS SIG, as well as other public facing communities such as Fedora. What we will not be covering is, uh, since neither of us are lawyers or speculative fiction writers, though my status reports do say otherwise, Anything we would say on legal questions would quickly veer into science fiction of how we would like the world to work versus how it would actually do so. We also will not be covering how what you might be able to install Fedora on a car's computer. Most of the current computers that the Red Hat in-vehicle operating system is aimed at will, are still in late prototype development. Uh, as with many new systems, uh, again, it is very speculative how this would work uh, in reality. So just to catch everybody up on what Red Hat in-vehicle operating system is all about. It's really, it's no secret that cars are becoming more and more dependent on software and technology or that there's a push for electric vehicles. At the same time, many automobile manufacturers are starting to realize that these classical methods of proprietary operating systems just aren't scalable and they won't work for the long term. So the Red Hat in-vehicle operating system is being developed to enable and accelerate many of these current trends in the automotive space in ways that traditional proprietary systems just can't handle. So the goal is to move the automotive industry into a more scalable and nimble way of design. So our original uh, development plans went something like this. Uh, we would work with various CentOS SIGs and CentOS Stream and mirror how RHEL was developed. However, uh, we actually went through this painful journey. We realized it glossed over a lot of important parts that uh, we had to go further back on. It's like watching a, a cooking show and having the cake pulled out of the oven, but you're not told how anything was put together are uh, where the eggs came from, the leavening and spices. And a lot of our work still needed to grind flour, find chickens and grow a vanilla tree. So uh, I'm gonna use an image that Alexandra Fedorova lent us uh, that she's done for her talks to give us a better idea of what how this works. Uh, packages are accumulated into Fedora repositories and then snapshotted into regular releases of Fedora uh, ELN. That gets broken into a release at some point like Fedora 34 or into a branch like uh, CentOS Stream. The CentOS Stream is then eventually uh, cooked further and becomes a Red Hat Enterprise Linux internally after some testing and other things. We then take a subset of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and we uh, do further testing, documentation, and certification, all during this whole time frame. We're working on this stuff, um, catching up with things, and we are also, in a way, this graph doesn't show, pulling things backwards from things. So this is really complex. Uh, how do we make this happen on top of all the customer requirements? Well, we do that the same way you'd eat a six foot diameter pie. We break it up into smaller bites. And I'm just realizing that we really must have been hungry when we were doing this presentation because we've made multiple references to food. I mean, starting before everything started and now uh, yeah. eight slides in. Yeah. 
But, you know, uh, got to do what you got to do. Yeah. But we do handle development the same way that we would handle eating this six foot diameter pie. We break it up. With so many unknowns and so much discovery, we need to break things up into man manageable chunks each sprint that are capable of delivering an increment, or in other terms, a bite. And doing this means more changes to Fedora and CentOS, and it means those changes come to you faster. So yes, that does mean we're using agile methodologies to deliver Red Hat and Vehicle OS to operating systems and the community. And as many of you have heard at Nauseam, Agile is an iterative approach and it involves and empowers customers and self-organizing teams to solve problems faster than traditional development styles. And since none of you came here for a lecture on Agile, I did add a picture of a dog to keep your attention as I got through just one more slide because we did feel it was important to mention how we're developing because it impacts the speed and quality of the software changes flowing into Fedora. We have joint development work that really keeps the customer involved early and often, and the teams that are working with the customers have the autonomy to discover and solve problems, all with a continuous improvement and systems thinking mindset. So why do you still care now that the puppy's gone? Uh, in the classical format, each part of the uh, oh, this layered cake you see is narrowly defined with large amounts of pre-planning and um, documentation built and written that uh, is can take years to complete without any results actually ever being delivered or defined. Uh, generally, each tier in this layered cake has minimum interactions with other layers to improve or change things. With Agile and Red Hat and Vehicle OS, uh, these changes are moving in a faster fashion. Depending on the software parts, the communication of requests may skip levels going up and down. Instead of large waterfall solutions where you would get need to buy a new car every couple of years to get a different application set, they will happen in steady iterations so that a 2027 car may still be getting software improvements up until 2037. So Agile, Fedora, and automotive development. How the heck do all these things tie together? And it's not a bad riddle, and don't worry, I'm not gonna call on any of you to answer it, but we're here to answer that today and take you through our process. So as we've mentioned earlier, we do, we involve customers early and often, and then we solution based on their needs and requirements that are determined in these joint interactions. And from here, we frequently push changes into Fedora that are available for all of you guys to see and collaborate on. So buckle up and we'll take you through the process of how we handle this in the next few slides. So we'll start with the generic layout that will describe how we go from customer needs to Fedora. And it all starts with requirements. And just a reminder, this is based on agile and lean solutions. So that's why you're seeing the customer being involved in so many facets of what we're doing and talking about today. But we start with the requirements that are sourced through these customer interactions. And then we take the parts of the problem and work on them in interdependent teams. We have different problems and we break them all down into different stages. And some of these stages look something like this. Hmm, what about this? Oh, all right, that worked. Let's make it better now. And okay, now we need to see if this works with other things. And as time goes on and these solutions are refined, the teams feed these solutions into various upstreams like OS build, kernel, lib camera, et cetera. And these smaller solutions are merged into Fedora where they can be used by workstation or other groups needing similar functionality. And last but not least, this is the slide that you didn't ask for because it's not spe Fedora specific, but we did want to show it to you because this final stage shows how these solutions are then farmed up into the automotive stream to allow customer solutions to be worked on immediately. So now we're going to kind of go a quick overview of one problem we've had to deal with. One of the biggest and ongoing problems um, we're having to uh, f figure out solutions for is getting a camera to a screen within two seconds. It is a very complex issue currently being us uh, worked on by Eric Curtin 
at uh, Red Hat, um, which I'm not going to be able to give a lot of detail on to the level he could, but it is a good example of how we're making things work all the way through. Uh, so we started with the problem, which is that various uh, regulations in the EU and the US uh, require that for a rear view camera to be operational within two seconds of the car being started from ground state. Uh, currently in new cars, um, combustion vehicles, this is done through hard, dedicated hardware solutions, which bypass a lot of stuff so that it can just be done. Uh, but how does a manufacturer do this with a software defined vehicle where everything's being run through via central computers? Uh, well, we had to go figure out a lot of different spikes to figure out what things were. How do we make the, the boot go faster? How do we get an image up in Plymouth? Uh, what kind of daemon do we use to show images from the rear view camera? Uh, what kind of camera is it? Where's the network? Once the spikes have been fully explored, and uh, merged upwards, we started upstreaming the solutions to various open source groups, uh, which impacted the kernel, libcamera, Dracut, systemd, and several other places um, that uh, had improvements silently put in, not saying that they were from this. Uh, the changes are then worked through those upstreams down into Fedora, either during release or in Rawhide to future releases. Some of the solutions are also backported back into CentOS stream automotive deliverables. Uh, those can then be evaluated, be included in RHEL or RIVUS over time. They're also delivered to customers for them to look at. So what else might be worked on and landed on from Fedora from the automotive SIG? Uh, SIG? Um, we are looking at uh, CAN bus utilities. Uh, CAN bus shows up in a lot of tooling. Uh, your refrigerator and your um, washing machine probably have a CAN bus attachment in it that your a technician would hook up to to look at things and uh, find out why the washing machine is not working. Um, beyond Beyond CAN bus, we are looking at uh, SAE J1939. This is more industrial equipment and would actually show up more into edge devices. But it is uh, everything from um, giant chemical machines to um, dump trucks and uh, 18 wheelers. Um, HTTP over UDP libraries. Uh, many car parts are actually talking to each other using HTTP over UDP. Uh, it's a faster protocol in some ways, uh, and but it doesn't work the, exactly the same way as H, uh, UDP does, or TCP does. Uh, various tooling that we're get, finding from the Connected Vehicles uh, Systems Alliance. Uh, we are um, pulling things out and uh, porting them in, uh, DLT daemon, vSUM, I3P, things like that. And also various utilities from QT because most of automotive is um, C++ based and is um, QT based. Um, so it, it is a lot, uh, various things are being tied in and be, uh, pulled in from there. So, um, what hardware did we do a lot of our, our initial development on? As everyone knows, uh, there's a, a lot of things going on and we, we found that we had one solution and we've gotten some choice quotes from um, developers to help explain what those things were. Hello, I'm just in case and I found this hardware to be very slow. I eventually switched to buying a four-year-old used Android phone put a container on it, and boom, a week's worth, and done in an hour. I leaned over here. Most of the automobile manufacturers are looking to use boards with completely different processors. I mean, who would ever even think about using this? 
Well, uh, Joe King couldn't make it his flight to Nest, so I'm filling in. We would not have been able to succeed on this hardware without the extra help and care we got from Peter Robinson and Pablo Greco. We thank them very much. Well, I definitely can't top the slide from our friends on the, uh, from the quotes that our friends provided on the slide above. And big thank you to Eileen Dover, Justin Case, and Joe King for uh, putting themselves on the line to say these great things. So after hearing all of this, why the heck did we choose the Raspberry Pi 4 as our hardware development platform? Well, there's a few reasons. Aside from the chip shortage and the community support, we did find some other benefits to using the Raspberry Pi 4. So many of our partners have very strict security requirements, which do not allow them to use cloud AR64 and AWS or other places without years and years of audits. Um, others had hardware, which was slow enough that made the Pi seem fast. Um, but all in all, the slowness of the Pi is something that allowed members of our team to focus on parts of the boot, which were actually too fast on virtual machines or snappier hardware. Um, at the time we started working on this about two years ago, we found many of our partners were using out-of-date operating systems, using tools aimed better at 32-bit embedded solutions versus the 64-bit workstation class hardware they are actually aiming to use. Uh, we worked in multiple stages to get their solutions working with RHEL and showed that it could be worked cleanly. Uh, the original two sets of partners we had then wanted to explore a more native RHEL solution, and we quickly transitioned to using EL8 and OS Builder. However, we also began running into issues with the EL8 systems. Uh, it had been designed around 2019 and Fedora 29, which was much user much newer than the 2014 uh, OS that the um, partners were um, using, if not the 2012 one. Um, however, the various applications they were working on actually needed stuff that were, was not in EL8 at all yet. At the time, EL9 was still very early in development with ELN only uh, being worked on in some stages. Uh, this is where we began really pulling a lot of stuff out of Fedora into quick deliverables in order to meet the customer expectations and then feeding back whatever problems we were running to back into the Fedora solutions. So what were we feeding back to Fedora uh, and how are we doing it? We were working together in short sprints with these partners to create solutions to address their concerns and their needs. So we had worked together on various QT libraries and compilers and other tools were even recompiled for ELE. Uh, work was also done to get ELN and then CentOS Stream 9 working on the test hardware that we had. And last but not least, we worked with the Upstream and Fedora OS Tree teams to get tooling fixes in place. So that was really the path forward with Fedora. And I know we've taken you through a lot of different Fedora examples today, but we uh, that really brings us to the, like, the end of what we wanted to discuss, but we wanted to share with you where else you might run into our team or some of the, dis the solutions that we talked about today. Um, so as everybody knows, Red Hat is involved very heavily in the community and uh, this slide just outlines some of the places that we are involved. And there's honestly, there's plenty of ways to join us on the ride of a lifetime for anyone who's interested. All right, I think we're down to doing questions. I apologize for not answering them during hands, but uh, um, I uh, I have the same problem Matthew Miller mentioned in his talk. Uh, looking at the chat while I'm trying to do a talk means I squirrel. And uh, well, sorry, squirrel. Um, <laughs> All right, so we'll now do some questions. I apologize for if people needed to do uh, questions beforehand and stuff. Uh, I will try and get through things backwards as possible. Let me do one more thing. There we go. Uh, so Matthew Miller asked, so in this model, some things might go from Fedora to Centos SIG, but not to Centos Stream and current RHEL. Um, yes in that 
some of these things are not there are things that we are building as sample applications that are in fedora but will not be in the normal release of the os um, this allows a partner who may have their own version of the vsum 3 ip that they they've tested and dealt with that they're going to go and um, uh, use that instead for um, um, but they need to have something that they can show with their partners in an open area that uh, we would be building so the qt stuff and the other little daemons will probably go uh, there into a sig but they wouldn't show up in stream or rel other things like fixes to dracoot and uh, kernel items may show up in the real-time kernel or they may show up in other in stream and rel as we improve the overall experience of a uh, fast boot oh, i missed this one i apologize and ricard i just um i just want to jump in real quick before you move on from that Stephen. uh just a shameless plug that we do have auto sd so automotive stream distribution is the automotive equivalent to the CentOS stream distribution for RHEL. Yeah. So some of the automotive specific things will show up there as well. Uh, I cannot answer your question on this regard, Grossman Nielsen. I'm not a BU person. I'm an enterprise person, so I do not know our business model and how it is done. Um, it's we i think we are doing direct things because we a, an automobile developer dealer doesn't want to have a free os they they're going to be supporting they are legally on the hook to support this car for 20 years in some cases uh, they need to make sure that whoever they're paying for this software is going to be around for 20 years and that changes the whole dynamic of business models um, and what type of operating system they can put into it I uh, think beyond the, beyond that, I can't answer because I'm I'm not a BU person. And I think the functional safety certification aspect of the Red Hat in Vehicle OS is something that adds a little more complexity to this. Yes, um, as well. Functional so. safety is a huge talk on its own, uh, and I am not an expert enough to even start on it, other than the fact that every part of what we ship has to be go through a whole bunch of documentation and testing and certification by outside vendors, uh, which is actually part of the reason why uh, what it there's only specific versions that will be certified and certifications do not transfer and all those kinds of things that um, we get back to that slide about legal questions. <laughs> Okay, does this mean we'll see Raspberry Pi support in CentOS RHEL at some point, or is it only going to be hidden in a corner of the CentOS stream? I have no idea. Not my, it's a BU, that's a BU question. Sorry, I can't answer that. Yeah. Um, there is, we will support it in our group as we need to, but other, the, those are other product lines and things that have other decisions to make sort of like we're not supporting automotive uh, on the power PC um, and we're not we're not going to port our stuff to be on an s390 not going to happen uh, so um, that's our decision and unless you really want to have a I mean we could probably do it on an 18 wheeler if you had the the, the wheeler contain the s390 and the uh, parts but it, uh, it'd be hard will that aim for it toward a higher level of driver customization are we talking about kernel drivers or car driver customization my um, mind went right to kernel drivers so i'm glad yeah i'm going to go with kernel drivers for this Kernels are um, um, oh UE UE drivers uh, no um, UEs are owned by the manufacturer 
uh, the UE is going to be, it, that is an experience that the manufacturer is delivering as an add-on thing that they want to have to be their stuff. We haven't done anything with that at the moment other than we'll drive your, your monitors for you. Um, how it looks and what is done in that is, you know, Ford is going to make it so that Ford looks like a Ford and GM looks like a GM. And um, we are going to look at doing things that will be um, uh, let me see if I missed any questions up here. We There is talk of doing a, what is it, the red ribbon car? Oh, uh, the F-110? Yeah. Maybe. Um, uh, in the auto SD, if there are people who would like to build a UE for a car and work on something like that, that would be, uh, that would be a place where that could be tested out and played with on a Raspberry Pi or something, but yeah, it's not, uh, it's not our currently our um, current goals. Most of them are just getting, making sure the hardware works in a safe and defined fashion. So to go off of a little bit more of what Steven said too, it's, the UI is definitely not in our scope for what we're developing now, but the Red Hat in-vehicle operating system is creating, a, I think, a more standard platform for the developers at these automotive uh, companies to develop on. So I think, although it's not one of our key goals or something we are necessarily doing, it's something that's going to be impacted. I think the, the developers will have a more standard platform to to design uh, different user interactions and, and user experiences on top of Red Hat and vehicle operating systems. So it is, I think ultimately that's something we'll see as a byproduct of the, uh, our product, but it's not something that's at the core of what we're, uh, we're trying to provide. As Steven said, functional safety and stability are the core of what we're trying to, to provide here. Well, it is coming up to the top of the hour. Are there any more questions? Uh, one um, more just came into chat. Oh, okay. Uh, we've mentioned Quick, which was pretty surprising given the RFC's release date, and makes me curious about this part of the stack. And Quick pretty much equals to boring SSL. Uh, as Red Hat Crypto team wasn't planning on adding to that, so how's that going to be handled? Will we see relevant parts in Fedora? Uh, well, it would be first worked on through Fedora. I mean, it's not something we're we're being asked to show that it can be done. Most of the vendors are going to have their own mid-level libraries that they're going to use at this time. They've already paid for them. They've got their own certifications and programs and all this that they're going to do with their applications. However, uh, they're wanting to, sh to show that it can be done in a general sense. So, um, the quick I mentioned because it is a form of UDP, HTTP over UDP. Um, it may it may end up being a different version that is being um, looked at in the end. It may be slow. I don't know. But anyway, I don't have a full answer to that. Um, I can try and look it up and get back to you. And with that, people do need to leave for other meetings. We're going to say goodbye. Thank you very much. We hope you had a good day. No, not Bobby. Oh, God, poor Bobby. I can't watch. It's okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Have a good day. Hey, thank you all. We appreciate your attendance and all the questions.